I'm, I can remember the first time I started moving in the miraculous. Now I was raised, I was raised in church, and I was raised around miracles, signs, and wonders all my life. But then there's a different thing when you begin to be a, uh, you begin to be a participant rather than a spectator. Okay, and so by and large, much of what I did in most of my life was just spectating. And then one day, I stepped into an anointing in God, and I immediately, I'm the one that convinced me. The, the Holy Ghost convinced me. I received an unction. I received an inspiration. I received a strong motivation. I, I, I received an anointing from the Holy One that I knew everything. First John 2.20, that it was all given to me. And I knew everything about what God wanted me to do, and I knew everything about flowing in the Holy Ghost. And I knew I carried something at that very moment. I knew I was carrying something. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you, in that time in my life, I really didn't feel a lot of the manifest presence of the Lord. Didn't mean to say I didn't get drunk in the Holy Ghost so much that I could. I lost the English language, because I did. But, you know, as we grow... And we, and, we, and we increase in things of God, there is a, there's, there's these different, various different expressions of interacting with the Lord and, and getting to know Him. And um, my goodness, dear people, but the reality of it is, I had the Word of God, and the Word of God told me to go do these things, and I went and did them, and we saw signs, wonders, and miracles. Hallelujah. 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 And you could go everywhere and do signs, wonders, and miracles. Some people, I would, could, could, I, could I just get everybody just to pretend you're excited for a minute? <laughs> No, I know that's not a pretend. I know that many of you just you just tired. But I want you to get drunk in the Holy Spirit tonight and you won't be tired. I want you to get bahara. I want you to be I want you to be so overwhelmed with the glory of God you forgot where you're at. Hallelujah. You could just all of a sudden you get up and start wandering around in the place, praising the Lord. Because you forgot where you you forgot. Hallelujah. For you. Oh uh, yeah. She cut a monsai. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. I, I, uh, I feel like seeing God is so good because he is. Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. You know when it's most beneficial to sing God is so good? When you think that, that you're, when you're really having very hard trials and situations. And, and it seems like that he's not near you. That he's not working things out for you. That he's not supplying to you all those things that he promised. Just begin to sing God is so good. Begin to give him praise. Tonight I want to talk to you about standing in a realm called faith. I want to talk to you about standing in a realm called the presence of the Lord. I want to talk to you about standing in a realm called the holies of holies. It totally, it totally changes everything about your life. It changes everything about the way that you live your life. Suddenly you get... You get, a, you get an impact from heaven that causes you to want to stay in this place and never, never depart out of this place. Never depart out of this realm. Hallelujah. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus, you're going to taste and see that the Lord is good. And you're going to stay over here in this place of His goodness. I want to I just, I want to make salvation real simple to you. If you weren't here this morning, I really want to encourage you listen to the YouTube this morning. Just listen to YouTube because I believe God is doing everything he possibly can do to encourage people to understand how faithful, how loyal, how committed he is to us. He's doing everything he can call, do to cause people to understand the only way you're ever going to learn how to walk in love is because you receive his love because he models it for us. That's what the Holy Ghost come to do. The only way you're ever going to walk in faithfulness and commitment to God is because you're interacting with God in an experience where you continually experience his faithfulness and his commitment to you and out of that you learn how to be faithful and committed to him. So I mean I, 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 you know, it's time for God's people to rise up and run and do these things. Yes. And, and this, I'm talking about a miraculous faith that works by love. I'm talking about a yes. supernatural realm that is just so dependent upon the Lord. See, the reality of it is I can't do anything that the Lord asked me to do 
of myself. I'm totally dependent upon Jesus. I can do nothing without him. I will never dilute his call to holiness because we're to be holy even as he is holy. I'll never dilute his call to purity because everyone who has this hope purifies himself even as he is pure. I'll never dilute his call to absolute, uh, absolute obedience because he calls us to come to a place to be perfect even as he is perfect. But I see that he's come to teach me. He's come to empower me. He's come to equip me. And with that he's got mercy that does not end. He's got, he's got love and kindness that does not in. And what we deal with many times is we deal with people who are stubbornly locked down in various different kinds of sin and iniquity, which basically, let me just say this, you're giving Satan permission to beat you up. So don't do that anymore, okay? But they're, they, they get locked down in their failure and they get locked down in sin and iniquity and they resist God. It's just saying, I want to forgive you. I want to show you mercy. I want to show you love. I want to show you how to do this. Because they're all wrapped up in their own identity. All wrapped up in their own self-performance. Having begun in the Spirit, we're not perfected out of our own human ability. We're perfected out of the same one that we, that, that, that we began in. The power of the Holy Ghost. This is what it means to walk in the Spirit. To be, he, He's come to teach us. In other words, He's come to model for us how to do these things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to understand tonight how to receive. How to be in the place to receive what God is doing. If you can come to a place of receiving what the Holy Ghost is supplying. And then you, and, and then you know you're in a state, as it were. To where that you know that you have something given given to you. You supply. You carry in something, man. Huh? You know that as soon as you lay your hands on someone, the power of God is going to strike them. The lightning is God's, the lightning is God's going to strike them. It doesn't matter what the response is. It doesn't matter. I mean, I just used to, I used to walk by people and, and just tell them, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about the first part of my ministry, first time, of, first, first year, of, you know, being in the ministry. I'd walk by people who were um, on just so medicated for various different things of depression and all kinds of various situations. I say, you never take, touch another drop of medicine again for the rest of your life because Jesus has made you whole. And that was it. There was no, I felt nothing. I had nothing. But did the word of God, sometimes it'd be a release of a little bit of tongues or whatever. But that would be it. What was, what, what was released is an authority in God because I knew I carried something. I was able to release it. We want you to understand how to do this. We want you to understand how to receive and, uh, the supply from heaven. Heaven, the miracle supply from heaven in the realms of salvation, in the realms of every dimension of provision, both spiritually and physically, and even financially, and how to keep it and not lose it. We don't want you to leak out. We don't want people leaking out. Are you, hallelujah. We want you, we want you, we want you flowing out. We don't want you leaking out. Ubrobakate. I want you tonight, by the mercies of the Lord Jesus Christ, to receive an electrifying power of God's divine grace into your spirit. They will absolutely transform everything that you know about what it means to walk with God. There's been too much concepts of Christianity and not enough understanding of what it means to have a living, real relationship. Hallelujah with the living God. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. There's nobody going to make it into glory unless Jesus died for you at Calvary and, and you believe it. And he died for you at Calvary, so just go ahead and believe it. No one's going to make it unless you look to the author and finish of your faith. This one thing you may be confident in, that he who began a good work in you will complete it as long as you're willing to allow it to be completed. Don't dilute the standard. Don't lower the standard. Don't make it something different. People want to make it something different because what happens is this. They hear about God's call to be holy even as I am holy and they become overburdened with their own self-reliance to do it. And that, I'll tell you right now, that's condemnation. I'm just telling you right now. Just might as well just give up before you get started because if it's left up to you, guess what? Nothing's going to happen, okay? You just, you got more on your shoulders than you could ever do. God ain't called you to be an angel. He ain't called you to be a seraphim. He ain't called you to be a cherubim. He's called you to be in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He's called you to be a son. He's given the authority and power and divine ability to do this. He's given us the Holy Ghost to show us how to strengthen us. And he wants us to totally learn how to depend upon him. The biggest challenge people have is that they choose dependent upon their own self. They try to do it by their own works, their own power, their own force of their own discipline. No, 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 no. Become God's dependent. Hallelujah. You say, I can do nothing. You know, when I'm, when, I'm, when, I'm being, when I'm being tackled by a lot of different things coming at me from different directions, first thing as I do is I begin to worship him and just thank the Lord because he's invited me to come and abide in him. I get to be in his house. I, I get to be under his protection, under his provision, under his divine everlasting care, his mercy 
mercy that does not end. His forgiveness that is multiplied over and over again. If I needed 490 times in a day, it would be there for me. And then I get to tell him, Lord, I can do nothing of myself. I don't know. You don't want me to do nothing of myself, and I don't want to do nothing of myself, and I recognize I could do nothing of myself. I depend upon you, oh God, strengthen me to do it. Show me how to do it. Show me how to be faithful. Show me how to walk in love. Show me how to do all these wonderful things that you purpose for me to do. I mean, God's taking us to a place, dear people, that is unimaginable to where that we rule and reign with him, where he sets us over even cherubims and seraphims, cherubims, protectors of the anointing, seraphims, those given to a ministry of continually declaring God's holiness, those creation that have never ever in any way uh, trespassed against God and yet he takes you and me and he puts us into Christ Jesus and through the body of his flesh he presents us holy and unblameable and unreprovable and this is what you're going to have if you're willing to be rooted and settled and grounded in this wonderful good news of the gospel. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name you get this. And you know what we can do? I'm gonna tell you right now, we're gonna if you in if you sin in iniquity we and you trying to hide from God, we're gonna call you out, man. We're gonna pull the co covers off of you and say, look at here. You know, we're gonna expose that thing. But it's always going to be in the goodness and the mercy of God so that he did so that you can get right. This is good the goodness of God leading men to repent. Is. It's the goodness of God taking you and me right out of the trash heap of humanity and clothing us with his glory and putting upon us his mantle of holiness and giving us his gift of righteousness and giving us his crown of glory and his royal diadem of authority. My goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I mean, when you get, when you get finished... When you get finished considering and thinking about all the good things that God has done for you, you can only, or you can't be doing anything else but praising Him, worshiping Him. When you begin to look at all that Father has done and all that He's given to you and me in His love, I'm going to start off tonight. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I'm going to start off tonight just reading to you the verse of Scripture that I read this morning. I hope nobody minds too much. Hallelujah. Well, you know, Tim, eventually Tim, Tim Hall's up in uh, L.A. tonight. He's going to go up there to have a meeting. Then, of course, he flies out on Tuesday. He just he wants, to, wants all of you guys to know that he loves you dearly. He loves his church dearly. And uh, he's been so blessed. I mean, we were able to really bless him. We blessed him. I think we blessed him with about $7,000 when he came. And all, you know, and... I mean, he's got a lot of work to do, so we want to empower him to go do it. And then I'm, we're going to have fruit on, we're going to have fruit laid to our account because of what he's doing. Yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah. So we also, also uh, allow you prayer in the session to go with them, to go with the, with the finances that you sowed into the ministry there. Let me read this first scripture to you, okay? This is my translation, okay? It's my translation. It's a good translation too, believe me, it's a good one. It's, it's accurate, it's accurate. It can stand the peer review. It can stand the test of scriptural, scriptural evaluation. I passionately pursue the purpose that controls every movement of my life. The crowning award of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I passionately pursue. I'm not going to do this morning's message all over again, but I just want to, in setting the tone tonight, I just want you to understand that when you begin to receive God's love for you, when you begin to accept God's love for you, you're literally overwhelmed by revelation from Him of all of His goodness and of who He's made you to be. Suddenly your consciousness of sin, your failure, your problems, your unworthiness goes away because all you're doing is looking at the author and finisher of your faith and you're just captivated by Him. All of a sudden, you're able to freely receive what He's freely given. God, who spared not His own Son, but offered Him up for the sins of us all. Now you can freely receive from Him everything that you have need of right now. If He spared not His own Son, 
but offered him up for the sins of us all, how much more shall he now freely give us all things by him? And when you step into that relationship of love, when there is no more consciousness of sin, when there is no more sense of sin, when there is therefore now no more condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, who walk not after their own human ability, but after the power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Then everything gets good. Suddenly your whole life will be defined by this one passionate pursuit. And I want you to go and I, tonight, I, after having received these things, and it's yours, and you, everyone here tonight, I believe that you've had the miracle of salvation. I'm so, I'm so um, disappointed to some degree that I don't see the woman this morning who God transformed her life. Maybe she didn't have a ride. But I'm going to tell you right now, God gave her a new heart, a new spirit standing right here. I felt that new heart and new spirit go out of me, bang, right into her. And... My goodness, I, I'm certain that she's still overwhelmed and staggering around by it. Hallelujah. Who brought that dear lady today? Who was it? Did you bring her? You, you Make sure that you give her a phone call. She's having a rejoicing, exciting time. Father, fix her. She came up. She wanted me to pray that her relationship be fixed. I said, which one? She was talking about her husband. I said, let's fix the one between you and God first. Hallelujah. And then everything else will work out. Praise God. The Lord fixed it. We want to see this whole, we want to see this whole region fixed. Yeah. Just fixed, so simply just fixed. Yeah. Just, just have, have an authority to say, I give to you, and, and on behalf of God, a new spirit and a new heart right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You go do that. Yeah. You go do that. Just as soon as somebody's got the door opened up a little bit. I, I mean, listen, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to ridicule other people that do pray after me prayers, but I'm telling you, I love the way Jesus did it. He said, I set you free right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, he, this is Jesus. He came, he came with the anointing of the Holy Ghost to open up the prison doors. Not to say, would you like me to open up the prison doors? But to open up the prison doors. To set the captive free. To say, I set you free. <laughs> huh? Paul said, I've received an anointing to turn people from the power of Satan to God. I just look at people and say, I turn you from the power of Satan now to the living God. Amen. 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 And I, I love how Brother Yun does it. He, he commands people, fall down and repent right now. And it works good in Asia. I don't know how well it would work here in San Diego. <laughs> you have to have that special anointing. You gotta, to have that special anointing, you've got to find the spot. You've got to find the place. What is the spot? What is the place? It's a place of receiving. Huh? I was watching Ruth Anna tonight. I'm so blessed by my darling Ruth Anna and my baby. I'm so blessed by all my children. I'm so blessed by Elizabeth. I don't want to, I'm so blessed by you. I don't want to leave anybody out. But I'm just, honestly, I'm just looking over there at this cloud of glory over top of her. Why? You watch her begin to praise and you watch her give, begin to give thanks. And what's happened? It's a spot where you begin to receive. You know, when, when she was little, she was like 10 and she just, her voice was just starting working. I wouldn't let her be up on the platform. I made her stay on the front row because I didn't want her be a target, you know, and protect her until she grows and gets stronger. But then as she, as she started getting a little older, she got about 13 years old, 14 years old, we started bringing her up on the platform because we recognized the gifting that was in her life, you know, and and so watch that begin to grow and watch that begin to mature. And then no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, when you begin to lift up your voice in praise, when you begin to lift up your voice in thanksgiving, all of a sudden you now open up yourself to receive from heaven rather than to receive from hell and the torment and the aggravation and all the confusion that's being bombarded uh, you're being bombarded with this coming out of the spirit of this world. And, but when you begin to just stand over in this place of thanking God, recognizing what he's doing. I mean, if you're going to come to God, it's in a realm called faith. If you're going to interact with God, it's a realm called faith. It's knowing that he is, that he's there, that he exists, that he's right here. And when you begin to recognize and when you begin to see who he is, how can you do anything else but give him thanks for all that he's done for you? And as you do, all of a sudden, you find the spot where all the glory glory now begins to flow into you. That is the point in time where now you're carrying something. Yeah. When you know you're carrying something, you don't have to say any long prayers. You lay your hands. I mean, Moses didn't have to pray any long prayers. God said, stretch out the rod. He said, stretch out the rod. Stand still and behold the salvation of your God. When no prayers, it's just the anointing was released. The flow of divine power that was, he was empowered with was released through him at the moment that he obeyed God and did what God told him to do. 
And I want you to understand, God's giving you something that is every bit as powerful and wonderful and glorious as a, as a, as a, as a, as a rod, as a mantle of Elijah. You have the mantle of Jesus Christ. The man, put on therefore the mantle of Christ Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. This is a mantle where now all of a sudden we occupied by what God's doing rather than what we're doing. We're not struggling to tame this beast so wild. Can you hear me? Yeah. My Uncle Charles wrote that song. Struggle all my lifetime to train, tame this beast so wild. God spoke a single word and redeemed his little child. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things have passed away. I've been born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm carrying something. I'm the representative of God. I'm standing in the place of Jesus Christ. I've been given the authority of a son. Not just any son. Not a son like Adam. Not a son like fallen angels. I'm talking about son. The son of God. That's who I am. My identity is drawn from there. He fills my mouth. He's put his word in my mouth. And in your mouth too. When you know it, ooh, suddenly it's released with authority. It's released with faith. It has divine results. God's preparing you to go and do anything, anything you ask. Or somebody said, what should I do? Whatever you do, God will bless it. Whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. <laughs> My goodness. Um, Pick a, pick a door and win a prize. I mean, come on, you know. Father's right there with you. Just get with the program. Yes. Just get a heavenly vision and go with it. I want you to grab a hold of this place of receiving. And, um, and I, I think one of my favorite verses of Scripture that makes the miracle of faith and the evidence of faith so easy and so simple and so powerful is Acts 16 verse 31. I think I first sang it in church when I was about three years of age. I, I, I sang in a little quartet called the Four Musketeers. Okay. And we were these little teeny guys. And we had come out singing this song in tent meetings and tent revivals. Huh? It's just a simple little song. Be believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved in your house. Acts 16 verse 31. <laughs> how, 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 how difficult, how complicated, how much sacrifice, how much discipline, how much study, how much fasting, how much praying does it take to have the greatest miracle of faith activated in your life? Let's go look. Because I'm telling you, dear people, once, once salvation is established in your life, my, 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 once the reality of the faith that produces a new creation takes place, everything else is just small. It's small miracles. It's small miracles. Hallelujah. Now, that's the greatest miracle of all. That's the hookup miracle. That's the relation miracle. That's where God brought you and me into union with Him. Huh? I'm going to help you tonight. If you'll listen to me, you'll receive the things that God has for you. You'll walk in them and you'll never be without them ever again for the rest of your life. You won't get prayed for and then have to go back to the sickness again. You won't find a place of overcoming power and then over being overwhelmed once again by the force of the enemy. You won't live under a bombardment of harassment and condemnation. There are too many people in the church that live constantly under the bombardment of harassment and condemnation because everything about their life is kind of defined things uh, in terms of that they got to do it and they're the performance person and they're, they're the guy or the girl that's going to make it all happen. Dear, dear people, we want to move you out of that terrible spot. Get you over here under the spout where the glory comes out. We want you to get God of us die, where God does it for us. It has, it has nothing to do with any works of righteousness which we have done. It has nothing to do with any skill set or ability that we have of ourselves. Can everybody hear me or do I need to turn myself up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I need to get down and start crying out for more anointing, man, we'll just get passionate about it in Jesus' name. We'll, get, we'll receive. We won't have to pray long. Hallelujah. I don't have to pray. I don't have to pray. I have it. 
I, it's a part of me. I'm going to release it. It's going to be released through me by the working power of the Holy Ghost that is in me. I know he's in me. I'm not wondering if he's in me. I don't have to have somebody convince me that I will hear Father say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. I have this confidence in Christ Jesus. Huh? I want you to have this confidence, Christ Jesus. I don't have to wonder, am I saved? I don't want you wondering, well, I think I'm saved. I want you to know absolutely God to give you the ability to know. And it's all going to be wrapped up in a revelation of how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, how compassionate he is towards us. I mean, when Father revealed himself to Moses, when Moses was asking, see, Father, in all of his glory, he said, I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm compassionate. I'm merciful. I'm long-suffering. I, I need every bit of that. Are you, come here now. Come on, man. What? Get excited. You do something. Grab a hold of something. You need every, let me say, you need every bit of this. You need every, when he says, I'm compassionate, you ought to be going, woo! I'm merciful. You ought to go. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And you, I'm long suffering. You ought to be going, wow, oh, God, I tell you, I know I'm, I'm, I know I'm safe now. I know it's going to be all right. I know he's going to work it out. I know he's the he author that he's going to finish it. I know I can be certain of this one thing. The God who began a good work in me. And that good work is Jesus reproduced. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Man. 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 Listen, the Lord just, when you read Malachi chapter 6, you'll find out the Lord, God, the Lord wasn't so upset with, with Israel being, you know, so slow at learning and getting it. He was upset about the fact that they seemingly couldn't get how long-suffering and merciful and gracious He is. They couldn't remember how that when they were nothing and nobody and they had no power, he brought them up out of the land of Goshen. He, they couldn't remember what he prophesied and said about them through, through uh, the prophet Balaam. And what they do, they just turn to other things to satisfy what they had need of. And, and the most thing, the thing that upset Father more than anything else was the murmuring and the complaining. Don't murmur and complain. Get over here when the realm of Thanksgiving. Yeah. This is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. I want you to get this tonight. I want you to understand this is the spout where the glory comes out. This is the place that you receive. This is where you strengthen. This is where you're supplied. This is where you're filled up. This is where you have something to give. Hallelujah. It If praise isn't something that's coming out of your mouth continually, make, begin, begin. To cry out to the Lord and say, I'm, make it a purpose. Lord, let me see the reality of all the works of your hands that surround me continually that I seem to be oblivious of or somehow I seem to take for granted. Let, let, I, mean, I mean, I was taught by one of my spiritual mentors. It is good just to know that I've been redeemed makes me feel good. I don't need anything added to the list. I can't get, when I start numbering all of the benefits and thinking of all the good things God has done for me, I can't get past the first one on the list. I haven't been able to get to number two and three and five and five hundred and one thousand and five thousand. I haven't been able, I, just to know I've been redeemed makes me feel good. Just to think about the keeper of my soul. Just to think about what he's done for me and what he's, what he's supplied to me. What the anointing anointing is an authorization. The anointing is a protection. I don't care. It doesn't matter what everybody's doing. It's a protection. As long as it's on you, you can't be killed. <laughs> Hallelujah. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Go ask David. Go ask Aaron. I can go through the whole list. People, if you know that, it's, you're, it's, going to be, it's going to be a reality in your life. Oh, I never got to the second missionary. Ryan, welcome back from India. 15 months in India. It's good to have your smiling, hungry, smiling face and hungry heart in the place. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, every, pre every preacher I know that knows about this place says God's just going to raise up a bunch of missionaries, shake the nations out of this place. I believe that. It's just not a good thing to say. It's true. It's the word of prophecy. We believe that we want to raise up people that know how to go everywhere and preach this gospel of the kingdom. And I mean, I know the Lord will get strong with us and the spirit of the Lord will flow out of me with a, with a, with, with a, with a rebuke at times where people just go ahead, just sit over there in that place of doubt and unbelief. When he's called you to go everywhere, 
everywhere and do the same work that Jesus did to preach this gospel of the kingdom as a witness to all nations and then the end will come. The worst thing you can do is be a part of some kind of program that's going to do something else than preach this gospel of the kingdom. And, we go, and I'm going to tell you, God has empowered you to do it. He's empowering you more. And, I, and, and the work that he started, he, he's, going to, he's going to complete it. You're going to get, you're going to get this. Yeah. You're going to find the place of strength. Let me tell you the place of the, let me tell you the place of the mighty. Can I tell you where the place of the mighty is? Yeah. It's the place of rejoicing. It really can't get any simpler than that. And, and, and it couldn't be any better than that. Huh? It, it, can I tell you the place of those that are strong and those who have strength? It is the place of thanksgiving. That's who the strength, that's where the strong, strength comes from. That's where the, the ability come, comes from from. Father, prophesy over you. His word is nothing but a bunch of prophecy over you. He'll pre proclaim uh, words that go forth either as messages or songs that we sing so that you will get it. And, and it's, at some place, at some point in time, you've got to open up your heart wide to God and begin to trust Him with everything. You've got to count everything lost. You've got everything as, as nothing. Everything is meaningless so that you can go ahead and have this great gift that God wants you to have. It, Paul, it wasn't just Paul and Paul's testimony in Philippians chapter 3. It happened the same thing with Abraham. He had to count everything as nothing. All that he had labored to have and all that he had labored to be. And by the time you get to be his age, you've accomplished a lot because he was in the 60s, you know. And now he's going to leave everything behind and he's going to begin to move. And he really starts taking up another step when he's actually in his 80s. Hey, look, some people get old and they think it's all over. Look, Abraham and Moses really started stepping into their relationship with God at 80. I hope it doesn't take me to be 80. You know, I'm pressing on at 55. I'm believing God that I'm going to walk in the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus by the time I'm 64 years old. I set the goal one, like one year ago that in 10 years, I'm going to have 10 years. I mean, but what if you don't set the goal? It's just going to be out there and you're just like, man, I'm going after this thing, man. I, I, I'm making every movement count to have this. And I pray in Jesus' name you'll come follow me and the power and the glory of God will eclipse every evil thing that is going on in this earth that everywhere God's people are raised up with mighty signs and wonders with authority in their mouth with healing in their hands huh? with a great power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost so and, and Father wants you to understand that you're, you can be a, you're able or empowered to stand in this faith by the power of God that's why we have the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power that your faith will not be in the wisdom of men not in your wisdom, not in your trying to figure it out, not in your ideas, or not in anyone else's, but that your faith would be in the power of God, because this is where you're going to stand. That's why then Paul said then in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, he said, he, he says this, he tells us to be courageous like men. He said, Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous like men. Be strong. This is a place w w that we've got good footing and good ground to believe everything that God has said because faith is all about simply believing what God said in His Word. That's what faith is. And this word has described things about you and me that we're having a hard time believing. We think that we got to get it somehow. We tried it, didn't work out. All the confusion, all the doubt, all the various different convoluting things because you make it too complicated. And I want you to just understand that miracles work just like it worked for this man. What should I do? What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And your house. So let's go over there. Let's open up that, that, let's open up that message for just a minute here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Now, here's what I was expecting to happen here tonight. Should I just let you in on what I expect to happen? I expect that all of a sudden you, you're just sitting there, you mind your own business, you mind your own business, you're about to fall off sleep like regular. <laughs> or whatever. Huh? Or you're maybe just captivated by what the word is saying and you're just listening intently to the things of the scripture. And suddenly, 
A power, an arresting power and authority comes upon you and you see. You see details. You hear details in the realms of what God knows. Because that's what happens. That's what happens. See and hear details in the things that God knows. Suddenly, your eyes are fixed on somebody and you cannot take it off. You're trying to take it off. You're going, what's wrong with me? Eyes get over here. But they're fixed on somebody. They're just like it's drawn to someone and you can't take your eyes off of them. It's fixed on them. And all of a sudden, you hear in, your, you hear in the Spirit, lay hands on them, disease the part out of, their, out of their body. That's what I'm expecting to happen to you tonight. This is the best place for you to get equipped right here in the meeting. Sunday night meeting is about miracle night. And uh, what, I want, what, uh, what I know God wants, what I want them to participate in happening is you to step in the miracle supply and start going everywhere doing these things that Jesus told you to do. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, I don't think I'm good enough. Oh, yeah, you are. Jesus made you good enough. You're in him. It has nothing to do with you. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, he's empowered us where we never need to sin again. And so that he says, I'm going to put it at a high standard. I'm going to say, if you sin. But I want you to understand, God is here with a provision of his long-suffering mercy and grace. His goodness is, is truth to where that no matter what happens, he'll forgive you because he loves us so much. He's so dedicated to us. He's so passionate about us. Hallelujah. All his desires are with us, sons of men. Can you imagine being loved by Father that much? You've never been loved by his, anyone as much as Father wants to love you. It's my strength. It's my ability to do what I do. It's why I was able. That's why I know I carry something. That's why I'm not affected by the opinions of men. When you love by God, you don't need love any from anywhere else. Now you're free to just love. I don't need. I don't need, I don't need nothing. I'm getting everything I need. You need something? No, I'm good. He asked me, you need something? I'm fine. I'm good. I'm well supplied. I have this glorious provision. I'm going to tell you, this is great liberty. I'm going to you, I tell you, your husband's going to like you a lot more. Your wife's going to like you a lot more because you're not trying to get something from them that they can't give you. Huh? Because when you're trying to get this that only comes from God, you're never, dis- you're never satisfied by what, from what, by, with what you're getting from the, the, the person you're looking, looking for it from. Hallelujah. The Lord called us to the Lord's called us to follow him, lay down our life, be servants like he's servants. Well when, well you can't walk around being so needy, you know what I'm saying? Being able to be a servant and lay down your life and give. You're gonna to have to receive. I'm gonna show you where to receive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, you feeling a little woozy? <laughs> huh? Feeling a little huh? Feeling that bubble up inside. Uh, feeling that joy. Hallelujah. Feeling that goodness of God that is kind of like, my, almost just incapacitates you. There's so much peace. <laughs> it's wonderful to live in that realm, isn't it? Well, we're going to have some, we got some better for you coming on here tonight. Something far better coming on here for you tonight. I'm in expectation. I'm in, I've got a confident expectation. That Jesus Christ is going to appear in the place. Because the Holy Ghost is going to do those things which only he can do. I'm here seeking his face. I'm passionately seeking his face. I'm not here for another religious meeting. People come and say, well, you know, meeting the same is going to be all things going to be the same as they were from the beginning of time. No, it's not. We in a realm of faith. We in a realm of confident expectation. Remember somebody say, oh, well, you know, I expect the meeting going to go like this. Or, well, I'm not getting the things out of the meeting that I wanted to get. Well, well, listen, hold up just a second. Let's get over into an expectation in God. To all those things, that all those wonderful things that belong in heaven become a reality for you in this place right now. And then I just, I'm going to tell you, the only way you begin to hook up with this is through th- praise and thanksgiving. It's through, it's through, it's through, it's through, it's through this, this act of responsiveness to God where the, the things that he said you believe in, in, and when you believe it creates great, creates great excitement on the inside of you. To recognize tonight that you've been called into the holies of holies, that you've been called into a place of oneness with him, that you have his full approval, that you have his full blessing, that he, there is absolutely nothing between you and him, dear people. You're going to start feeling a whole lot better. You're going to start feeling a whole lot better. We want you to feel a whole lot better. In Jesus' mighty name. Acts chapter 16. Turn there with me. Verse 25. 
And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. <laughs> they in a spot. That isn't just in there to make them appear spiritual. That's there for you and I to understand how the miracle is going to happen. This is how the miracle happens. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. A lot of people pray, 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 but they never begin to give thanks and praise and, and, and call it done. You know, reality of it is, is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. I know uh, Tim spoke of hypostasis the other night, and he talked about hypostasis being a footing, a place where you can stand, a solid ground, a solid footing. For me, hypostasis means, hypostasis is a very difficult word, it's a very difficult word, um, and, and what Tim said is true, it's accurate, but because it's a very complex word, for me, it means reality. Faith is the reality of things that you confidently expect. It's reality. It's already my reality. In other words, it's already done. It, 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 is, it is something, it is um, one of the ways to translate hypostasis is an immovable possession. It's an immovable possession. I have an immovable possession. Oh, faith is an immovable possession of those things which I confidently expect to happen. Hallelujah. That means I get to see him. I'm going to get to see Jesus face to face before I leave this earth. I'm expecting to step into a realm. I believe that the first time, it's like, it's like the first time you begin to speak in uh, the heavenly language. After that, it flows real easy and it just comes ordinary. I figure that first after the first encounter with Jesus where I get to see him face to face, it's just going to come very regularly. Amen. What are you expecting to happen? Huh? I'm, I, somebody said, listen, I'm telling you right now, I'm not here by accident. I'm not, we're not standing here on the other side. There's 33,000 square foot of building right there. There's 33,000 square, square foot of building. I'm not looking for something to happen. I want you, Kelly, you guys are working hard, but I'm not looking for something that will happen because we're going to give away an iPad. Yeah. Right. Right. Or a PlayStation. That's true. That's true. I'm looking for something to happen on a scale. When, 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 when we talk about the moving of the waters, I'm looking for the moving of the waters. Truly, everybody in this earth is sitting, looking, waiting for the waters to stir. I'm not going to let somebody else do my work. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to wait for somebody else to get it. I'm going to begin to passionately seek God. I'm going to lay hold on this realm that Father's made it available. It's ours. It's like we, we don't have to bang too hard. The fact of it is, Jesus is the one doing all the knocking around here. <laughs> he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Open up the door. I'll come in and sup with you. He's talking to a church, too, people. He's not talking to a lost and dying world. He's talking to a church called the Laodiceans. And the Laodicean, literally, it would mean to please the people. The Laos, to please. This, the Laos, the Laos is a people. To please the people. And so much church gets turned around, turned to the pleasing of people. Does this sound good to you? Does this make you feel good? Are you happy? Am I stepping on your toes? Am I putting too much responsibility? Oh, I know you're already laboring and hard working and hard, overwhelmed with your issues of life. Am I putting more on you? No, 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 no. It's all about, forget about that. It's, it's rather turning towards the Father and say, Father, we want to please you. Father, I want to please you, and only you can show me how to please you. And I know, oh God, that I know, and that's what Paul said, and I said this this morning for, in, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 15. Everyone, everyone who is perfect, be the, thus minded, and perfect in that context, simply si saying, this is exactly what fa pleases Father, this is exactly what Father wants of us. He wants our lives to be so committed to having and experiencing all the wonders of His divine power and the glory that He's given to us. He doesn't want us to be distracted grinding milk for the Philistines. I was in an elevator with a bunch of heathens one day. And I said, how many of you are tired of grinding milk for the Philistines? Everybody in that elevator knew what I meant. How many of you are tired of going round and round and round your life just round and round and round? Huh? Everybody in that elevator knew exactly what I was talking about. I said, let's get off of this merry-go-round. Let's get off this merry-go-round. Let's begin to be what God created us to be. Come on now. And everybody's happy for a few seconds. Reality, their reality sets in. We're back to work. Right? Right? Faith is the reality of things that you confidently expect. It is the proof of those things which you cannot see. 
the beautiful relationship with the Lord where he opens up our eyes and causes us to see the unseen. Whew. He causes us to hear that which is in, in some respects a practical application in our life but he declares to us, to, to us in his word that we can speak to the rock and the water comes out. Speak to the rock and the water come out. He tell us, he declares to us in his word that whatever we ask the Father, Father will do it. But you've got to, re, you've got to be able to receive this realm. You can't be locked into yourself. You can't be locked in, in prison, encased, enclosed, embalmed, set inside of a mausoleum of yourself and have these things. You're going to have to step out from all the stuff that occupies your mind and all your worries and all your concerns and begin to just find a place wherein you are totally empowered and defined by what God has done for you. Paul and Silas were in jail but they, and in prison, but they weren't shut up from God. Just shut off from God. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. Prisoners heard them. Suddenly God, the Father joins in. Jesus joins in. There was a great earthquake. You need an earthquake? I want an earthquake. So, person said to me, he said, Mark, you, what happens when you begin to start praising? You jump in head first. You ought to take people in a little bit easier. Take them in ankle deep first. Now I'm going to jump in. I'm going to jump in. I'm gonna, I want to go for a realm of praise, dear people, where the earth shakes. I'm always looking at this earth shaking stuff going on. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the disciples being threatened, not to speak in the name of Jesus anymore. They begin to pray, and the place where they were assembled was sh an earthquake took place. It was sh It shook. It shook with the presence of God. And they were all filled with the Spirit. That's all I'm going after. That's my confident expectation. I'm going after a, 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 a moving of the power of God. I'm going after an encounter with a living God. I'm going after with a, a, a revelation and a supply from heaven that is unlike anything that has ever taken place in my life. God to me is real. He's not a figment of anyone's imagination. He's not a fictitious character locked away in the heavens somewhere. Uncaring, un unimpacted by your needs and your issues. God so loved us, He gave His only begotten Son. He offered up His Son for us all. How much, when we were separated, enemies, alienated, how much more is He hungry and passionate to freely give you everything that you have need of right now? You, I tell you, the worst possible thing is to have so much from God and sit around seemingly disinterested, to have so much mercy, so much commitment, so much dedication, so much love, so much grace. There are so many people that sit in church and they resist the Holy Ghost. They act so disinterested. There could be no greater violation of his love than such a thing. It's, not, it's so easy to make heaven. It's so easy to walk with God. It's so easy to have every good thing that he's promised. All you've got to do is humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That, that matter of fact, that verse of scripture there in 1 Peter when he says, humble yourself in the mighty hand of God, chapter 5. He said, casting all of your anxieties. Take off, cast it off of you. Huh? Throwing off, casting away. If a spider's crawling up your coat, what do you do? Oh, those you. Here, come here, dear spider. Here, come here, crawl on my hand. Not normally. If you're like me, you're going to cast that thing off. You're going to knock that thing off. Knock off all your anxieties. Throw off all your anxieties. This ang anxious, fearful stress, that, this depression, this continual bombardment and harassment. It's there, dear people. It's one of the primary weapons that Satan uses against us. It's one of his primary tricks. God wants you and I to be able to take a hold of the divine power power and grace where we can stand against all the wiles, all the tricks, all the devices of the enemy to where the, his word abides in us and we conquer Satan in every point that he comes out against us. Well, I'm telling you that one of the primary things, fix this, one of the primary things that God has for you and me is to be able to grab a hold of this love relationship that no matter what crisis that you go through, he's standing there in your midst. He's God in your midst. He's both with you and in you. Hallelujah. 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 Uh -huh. 
<laughs> when you know this, things change. Father wants you to know this. Where does it start? It starts by hearing the word. And you might say, really? Really? You might say, I, I, it is okay to say this. I don't get it, God. God I, I can't see it. I can't grab a hold of it. I've had so many things going on. Oh, God, show me. Let me see it. Let me understand it. I can't know these things unless you show me. This, we're, we're touching truth now. Instead of beating yourself up because you don't have something that only God can reveal to you and give to you. Huh? Instead of beating yourself up because you can't do something that only God can do through you. <laughs> you got to turn your heart, your fence, and your trust. He wants you to walk with Him. He wants you to depend upon Him. He wants you to rely upon Him. He's the only one that knows the way of escape. He's the only one that knows the way of life. He's the only one who can protect you. He's the only sure defense. He's the only shield. This is the biggest challenge to your people. Being willing to leave everything behind. Being able to count it all as loss is meaningless to me. And nothing back there that I need. And nothing back there that I need to take with me. I, my, my sights are set upon the celestial city. My sights are set upon this great um, grand prize. This great uh, amazing award that God will give to me. <laughs> where he will call me into the winner's circle and come out himself and crown me with the crown of the victor, the, the winner. Hallelujah. 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 He's going to. He is. And that's, why Paul, that's what Paul was referring to in Philippians chapter 14. He used four words used in the arena. Four words used in the arena. And ultimately, the big grand prize was for the emperor himself to come out because you won the biggest event that existed within the framework of what they did in the arena. And the emperor himself comes out and he crowns you. And I'm telling you, when you come out of the blocks, you're not thinking about what you're going to have for dinner. When you come out of the blocks, you're not thinking about what somebody did to you last year. When you come out of the blocks, you're not thinking about any other thing but crossing that line. Crossing that line so that every movement of your body, every movement of your body is under the control of this one purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keeping there the way, the only way you're not going to keep there, people, is to praise and thanksgiving. I'm telling you right now, if you don't feel peace, you need to pray in the Holy Ghost and the peace comes. If you don't feel joy, you need to pray in the Holy Ghost and the peace comes. Or joy comes. If you don't feel the love of God, you need to pray in the Holy Ghost and the love comes. And there's a part, there's a place of praising in that prayer. That's praise now. I'm not just talking about prayer that is just making known the things that are the need that you have. I heard a, a story many times about one of the great Pentecostal preachers that was alive in the 30s and the 40s running around with the Ritchie brothers who God anointed them with such extraordinary works of miracles. They're not even seen in the earth right now. They're our generation and I'm telling you right now I, I'm, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to hold on these things in God. And I know all these things. I'm going to tell you right now. All, is around, all, is, all it is about is receiving more of his love. And being more comfortable and confident around him. Being more bold more certain. That's all. That's all. But anyway, this is in, in this preacher and he's going around and he's preaching. And he gets tuberculosis. This young preacher gets tuberculosis. And now he's going everywhere and he's asking people to pray for him. When the revival meeting is over, he's a revivalist. He's a great authority. He's got tuberculosis. And a bunch of different people prayed for him, but he still got tuberculosis. And it advances to the point, he's probably got thousands of people praying for him. Thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even a hundred thousands of hours have gone up in prayer on his behalf. And he, grew, and he grew all the worse. Until he was so sick that he went to his father-in-law's father house to die, completely bedridden. He didn't have enough strength to turn himself over. They had turned him over. Hemorrhaging from his lungs. Blood. Somehow, he was able to look outside and he, his, his wife and his, and his mother-in-law were doing laundry out in the back and his father-in-law was way out beyond where anybody could see or hear and plowing the field and he looked outside and he saw a bush. He saw a set of bushes and for some reason he felt in his spirit, 
I need to go out there and pray. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to pray. I, I, I'm either going to get healed or I'm going to die. And he mustered enough strength. The last of his strength and he went out there and laid down in the bush and he began, he laid back and he could barely even whisper. He began to pray and he just suddenly thought, listen, there's been some tens of thousands of hours go up into my prayer. Suddenly he was reminded of this first scripture. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. <laughs> he said, there's been tens of thousands of hours going into prayer and nothing's happened. But I, I don't think we've been singing any praises. I don't been, think we've been thanking God that what he said he did, that he's done is ours, it's mine, it's finished, it's over, it's done, it's signed, it's sealed, it's delivered. God said it's already done, it's my reality, it's my proof, it's done, it's finished, it's mine. Huh? He went from bearing name to whisper and finally was able to, because he's laying on his back and gets his hands up basically at elbow level. And now before long he's got his hands straight up. And when it was all said and done, he was standing up and it was heard. It was told that he could be heard praising God from two miles away. Two mandate ikela. He went everywhere with the signs, wonders, and miracles of God. He found the place where he was seen. He found the spot where you receive all that God has supplied. Ha. You begin to give him thanks and you praise him and you call him, you call it done. You say what you said is done, what, you, what you've given. Oh God, you're faithful to perform. You're the one who's already established it. I'm not waiting for it to happen. If I come to you and I ask you, are you saved? And if you can't tell me, yes sir, I am absolutely saved, then your salvation is not real. We want that salvation to be real. There needs to be a change. We need to deal with you until well, ever stronghold of doubt is broken off of you. Sometimes it's a stronghold of doubt because people can't believe it's that easy. I've dealt with dying people to say all you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord Jesus and the miracle of salvation will come into your life and everything that God has for you will be instantaneously yours. And they say it just can't be that easy. But it is that easy. And it'll humble a man. It'll humble a person who's got to always do their striving and always do their works and always do their effort and always do their performance. Be something. They feel something that they've got to do. They've got to make it happen. No, 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 no. Oh, I can do nothing without him. And he's called me and ordained me to do all things by him. That whatever I ask the Father, he'd do it for me. Oh, God, the Father wants you to just be so overwhelmed by his love. Mind when you get overwhelmed by his love, I'm telling you, dear people, listen to me. I want you to understand something. You listen to me. Your relationship problems that are going on right now is only an evidence of your relationship problem between you and the Father. You get your relationship pro problem but it's fixed between you and the Father and all the relationships around you will be fixed. Your relationship problems are an evidence of your, that you have with people are an evidence of your problem with Father. That's what Jesus said. That's what John said. How can you say you love God whom you have seen and you hate your brother? How, how can you say you love God whom you have not seen when you hate your brother whom you have seen? Whatever is going on in your relationships around you is an indication of the relationship you have with God. And you don't have to browbeat yourself. And you don't have to condemn yourself. You don't have to get up with yourself. With yourself. You just cry out to God and say, help me, Lord Jesus. And guess what? He's going to help you. Save me, Lord Jesus. Guess what he's going to do? He's going to save you. He's going to be Savior. Cause me to be different, Lord Jesus. He's going to make you as different in your thinking as he makes you as different in your heart and your spirit. Change me, oh God, my attitude be different. He's going to make your attitude different as real as he made you a new creation. Made you different. He's going to make you different in your attitude. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> God wants you to just learn. Father wants you to just learn total dependency upon him. Can you, how hard is that? Yeah. <laughs> to, be so, to have someone who loves you so much. To be so loyal to you should make it so easy to be totally dependent upon them. Tonight, my faith is focused not so much in miraculous and signs and wonders in terms of the things that you would see in terms of people's bodies being healed and in terms of, uh, of, of, of various different manifestations. My faith and my desire is so focused on you grabbing a hold of this with your heart and with your spirit and beginning to live in a realm saturated by the love of God because then you will be released into uh, the divine glories of his divine power on a scale that you can't even imagine. And it was also simple. Just no one believing the love that God has for you. God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God. Father, where does this love come from? Holy Spirit's going to pour it into me. 
the love of God is poured into us by the Holy Ghost, which he's given into us. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, 6. I need, a place. I need to be in that place of receiving. Last night the Lord woke me up with a burden about three, ten minutes after three. He woke me up with a burden. I don't live with a burden. I get rid of burdens as soon as they come. Are you with me? Don't occupy yourself in a burden. I got a burden. So I begin to pray. I prayed in the Holy Ghost till the burden left. It was about an hour later. The Lord, sometimes the Lord lets me know what I'm praying for. The Lord didn't let me know what I was praying for. I just prayed. I barely prayed anything with the understanding. It was most all in the Spirit. And God, she prayed with me. And about an hour later, the great glory and saturated peace of God came over me. And he just laid me down. He put me right to sleep. In seconds, put me right to sleep. Because I live in that realm. God wants us to live in that realm. He doesn't want us carrying burdens. He doesn't want us carrying anxiety. Cast all your anxieties upon him, for he cares for you. You know, it was really wrong for the translators to say, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. And to make those two words sound equal, your care and his care. Because it's not. Cast all your anxiety upon him for he's concerned for you. And it's a compassionate concern. It's a concern of a mother for a child. It's not a concern of a neighbor for a friend. It's a concern of someone who's, who, who, whose life centers around you. Think about it. Imagine this. That God's life centers around you. I believe this. I believe, I believe that I'm the apple of his eye. I believe that he did every, everything that he did, he did it for me. I believe this. I believe this love of God. I believe this wonderful grace that God has given. Would you believe that for yourself? Would you accept what God has done for you? And, and accept it in such a personal way. Cast all your anxieties upon him for he cares for you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Dear people, d don't, don't walk around occupied with worry and with stress and, and being burdened with, with the issues or the, or the things that you're responsible for. You don't have to say, sing the song, Oh Lord, please change everything quickly. Please change it all and make it just like you want it to be. You can sing the song, Father, I thank, that you, I thank you that you have changed everything. And it's all just like you want it to be. <laughs> and I'm in the center of your will and care, and I don't have to prop nothing up. I don't have to prop nothing up. I don't have to make anything happen. I don't have to pay the bills on this building. I don't have to be concerned about how, what miracle transpires to see 33,000 people in there. I mean, 33,000. 33,000 square foot of, of space occupied. That'd be, that would be a miracle. Yeah. 33,000 square foot of space occupied. My ego's not in it. My passion's in it for him. He's the only one that can make it happen. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to strive. My reputation's not on the line. And neither is his. Yeah. All I'm calling out to do is I want to be a part of this. God, I want you to use me. Lord, I want you to change whatever you need to change about me, oh God, so that you can use me more. The most important thing to me, the most valuable thing to me is more anointing. Yes, Hallelujah. Yeah. More anointing. Yeah. Trying to say it like Brother Yun. More anointing. Oh, Jesus. Let everything... Let everything about your life be changed. Don't sit in sorrow and sadness anymore. Don't sit under the clouds of doubt and unbelief anymore. Don't be separated from all this good things that God has. Don't just have a little thimble full. Don't just have a little glass full when God wants to give you all that w the fullness which the heavens of heavens cannot contain. So much. Whew, so much. So much. So much. So much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hana mangeya la haya hi shayatiya. Oh, she kara na say. Mandala na mana sata. Manga like a taya parasaya. Emendeya rapa koshanga like a taya. Manga deya ikideya. Atatana na shikeya teya na haye. Avateya puta hana siya teya hala. Ha 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 Hallelujah. 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 Uh, listen, the Lord wants to know you're carrying wants you to know you're carrying something so you can give it away. I watch people walk up to folks and they begin to pray and they just pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And prayer is good. Prayer is wonderful. But there's at some point there's got to be a release. There has to be a release. That release is only going to come because you know you're carrying something and that you can release it. It's given to you and you can release it. Hallelujah. It flows into someone else. I'm, sometimes the Lord just has me just breathe out on people. And I didn't just start doing that because I read in the Bible where Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. Because it came unto me as a strong inspiration. And the first time that that happened in my life, I, th it was in a situation, I, I just breathed out just a little bit on a person and it, would, it, and it was an amazing event that took place. Jesus worked a great miracle. It's both this, it's recognizing both that he's with us for, for, and he's doing the work and the fact that he's given us the capacity to be a part of that work that he is doing. It's got to be both. Can't we just be Jesus coming over here and heal this person? He just sent you there and do it. Hallelujah. In his name and he's there working with you. Amen. Amen. My daddy used to say, and I've heard this from many other men of God too, when he first started ministry, the Lord allowed him to, Lord, allowed many of those guys in the 40s to have their eyes open and see what was going on. He'd reach out and he'd lay his hand on someone that was sick and diseased. And the angel that stood beside him that was about 12 foot high would reach out his hand and set his hand on top of his hand. It's not hard to believe that person's going to get healed. <laughs> It's hard to believe uh, that you're carrying something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I was sitting with Oral Roberts one day and he was telling me about the fire that would come into his hand and how it would build up in his hand and fill up all the way to his elbow. And then all of a sudden he would reach out and as soon as he reached out, he could feel that same anointing, that same glory that filled up his hand. <laughs> released right in the person he laid hands on. My goodness. I mean, and, the, and the Lord does these special, unique things for different people just to help them understand what it is he's doing to be able to hook up their faith and release their faith. But you know what? God's done many things through my life and I never had any of that. But we get to grow and mature in, the, in, in whatever fashion the Father has purposed for us to grow and mature. What you do have is you have the word of truth. You have the word of life. And Father is absolutely going to share stand by every one of his promises so that you can hold fast a confession of your faith without wavering because he's faithful who's promised and he's standing right here with you. The man went sick for so many years because he didn't just start thanking the Lord that it was done. Praise him for his goodness. I want you to get into a praise meeting every day. You got to get yourself into a shout and a song and dance. How so much words you learn how to dance, man? In my living room, I got all kinds of different dances. They Holy Ghost dances. <laughs> Hallelujah! Fuck They may look strange to people, but I tell you, I get a lot of pleasure out of them, and I know Father, there are pleasures in them too. Find this relationship of rejoicing in the Lord. Find this place of doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You're out doing the work of the Lord. You're on assignment from God. Paul was, a, Paul was just constantly getting it. He was getting it. He gets an abundance of revelation. He gets to spend three years with the Lord Jesus in the wilderness. And he gets to, the, he gets to Jerusalem. And the elders sent him home to be with mom. Because he was a troublemaker. 
Because <laughs> he, he was just too radical. He was too intense. So he's going to send him home. He's going to get us all in trouble. Then the Lord stirred up Barnabas to go get him. And he, and he brings him back. And he spends a number of years in Antioch. Ultimately to be released upon the scene. And he gets out there. And they take him and they beat him, man. They beat him. They beat him up. They beat him. They think back in those days, if, if they would just treat you terrible, man. They strip you down naked, embarrass you, take a you, before everybody, and then beat you like beat you with 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 rods. So humiliating. And then they threw him in the jail. And he wasn't feeling all God's rejected me and then accepted me if I was anointed. And what's it do then? They prayed and sing praises. The earth shook. The foundation of the prison were sacred. The foundation of the prison. Whew, the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately the doors were opened. Every bond, every band was loosed. I have found this to be true. The enemy is trying to put us in prison all the time. Spiritual situations, circumstances. Trying to bind us. Trying to bind our mouth where prayer and praise can't come out. Trying to bind us so that we that the joy of the Lord's not there. The, the revelation of Jesus isn't before us and that life giving shout isn't within us. But I'm telling you as you begin to lift up your voice and begin to praise him every band will drop off of you every hindrance will be removed. Every weapon formed against you will fall before your feet. Nothing that Satan tries to do will prosper. Satan will not be able to touch you. Satan can touch me. Because I find myself surrounded by the glory of the Lord. Because I'm a special child. I'm so important to Him. And so are you. The only difference that may exist is I know it a little more. And I want to know it more. And the only difference that may exist is I may know it a little bit more. Than you do. And I want to know it more. The only thing that keeps me from falling and keeps me from walking in disobedience. Is because I'm overwhelmed by His love. He's loved me so much that I just want to love him back. I just want to please him. I've never had a love like this. There's never been a love like this. And the keeper of the prison woke up out of his sleep and seen the prison door, doors open. He drew his sword to kill himself, supposing the prisoners had all escaped. Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm. We're all here. <laughs> Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling, fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? I'm going to tell you what you must do to have the greatest miracle of your life. I'm going to tell you what you're going to have to do to have any miracle in your life. I'm going to tell you what you need to do if you want to see everything about what's going on in your life right now changed. Verse 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you should be saved in your house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in the house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized and all in straight and all hissed immediately. And when he had brought them into the house, he set meat before them and rejoiced. There we go. Rejoicing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When that woman today was transformed by the power of God, she fell upon the ground. I know she was down there just captivated by the presence of the Lord. A lot of what was going on was just, she was just, she was crying, she was weeping. She was overwhelmed by the presence of the Lord. She needs to be back, come back in church so she can begin to joy and rejoice for all the great things that God has done. Begin to recognize what God has done for you. Begin to recognize, this is, this is who I am. This is what God's made me. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things pass away. I'm born again. I'm more than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm the creation. I'm the born again. Hallelujah. I want to read one more verse of scripture to you in Philippians. Chapter 4. The Lord says, don't be, don't have anxiety about anything. Don't worry about anything. Anxiety is worse than worry. Worry will lead you to anxiety. 
Tonight I'm going to go after, tonight I'm going after in Jesus' name. Every power of darkness that torments and harasses and produces depression and anxiety. We live, can you imagine walking around in an anointing that is able to release people from anxiety and stress? Doc, dentists are making a fortune off of preparing these special little teeth cards for people because everybody's grinding their teeth in the night. It's gnashing of teeth. <laughs> That's like hell. There should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The stress, the anxiety, the torment. If you, there's any door you open up to the enemy, he's going to come in with his anxiety. Then come in with his stress, with his torment. Don't have anxiety about anything. Mm -hmm. But with prayer and supplication. With what? Thanksgiving. There has got to be a reception. Yeah. See, there's the asking, but then there's got to be a receiving. If when you ask, there's no delay in the giving. Then there is, then evidently, you, there should be a re no delay in the response of thank you. Wow, I got this. It's mine. It belongs to me. The day I got saved, I really got saved. I mean, I really got born again. I became his. I didn't have to earn sonship. It was given to me. I didn't earn being a miracle man. I have no problem telling people I'm a miracle man. I walked into a room the other day, and a, girl, a woman says, you're sick. I said, what's wrong with you? Well, I said, well, I got the cure. You do? Yeah. I said, I'm a miracle man. <laughs> well, how are you going to do? I said, I'm just going to pray over you in Jesus' name. You're going to be healed. How do you like that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? I didn't have to go through some long explanation, some religious diatribe. Huh? It's about it's coming with some authority. It's about saying we're gonna get, we got your cure right here. Huh? We got your cure right now. Hey, you don't have to go on in this thing any longer. And they're sitting around and, and, and debate the issue and try to convince people of something. My, it's just, just do what Jesus told you to yep. do. Yep. Just do what Jesus. Did. Be confident that you got something. And if you don't have something, we want you to get something tonight. We want you to, my, 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 my. Somebody said, I just don't like you said that Jesus is you, 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 the center of God's universe. You, the center of his affection. I just don't even like that. He ever lives to pray and intercede for me. That's make a, uh, uh, that's really making me the center of his life. That's making you he forever lives to pray. I mean, he, his whole thing, his whole thing. <laughs> Is it praying for you, praying for me, and I'm not. I can't really talk about you, because I'm so captivated with me right now over here. I'm just captivated. By, oh, I'll tell you by way of experience and certainty, he's doing it for you too, because he's no respecter person. But fundamentally, there's a lot of people saying he's doing it for you, and they've never allowed it to be for them individually, personally. It's got to be for me. I first got to partake of this fruit. I first got to taste and see for myself how good God is. And then when you do, you're going to get frustrated with people who aren't willing to receive. You're going, my goodness gracious, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> It's too easy. It's too easy. It's too easy to walk this narrow way. It's narrow, but it's easy to walk it. If you be there to find it, because most people find themselves captivated under the grip and claw of pride, pride of life and arrogance and self-reliance. They're special in their own eyes. I am not special in my own eyes with respect to who I am. I'm special within the framework of who Jesus is to me and what he feels about me. That's all that makes me special. Nothing else makes me special. In fact, I don't find any other good thing about my life. Every bit of my life that is good is defined in Jesus Christ. That's all I'm, because that's far exceeding beyond anything that I've ever thought of myself or anybody could ever think of themselves. I hope that everybody gets over themselves. I don't want to get too personal with you tonight. But I'm demanded by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you go ahead and hate your life in this world yeah. because it's nonsense. Yeah. That all your identity, all the things that you think about yourself and all the things that you value yourself to be will be nothing but counted but lost to yeah. you. Be dung. That's a powerful word. Because yeah. there's an equivalence, uh, there's an English equivalence that we dare not say. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> 
true. Huh? True. No, sir, we're not going to do it in church. No, we're going to leave it to do the Bible. <laughs> but if I said it in Greek, and there was Greek-speaking people in there, they'd go, <gasps> he said that. <laughs> because the English King James put a nice little tongue upon it. <laughs> It's impossible to feel that way about it until you've seen the beauty and the splendor of his love. And I'm here to tell you tonight that the ability to be able to see the beauty and the splendor of his love is to begin to rejoice, begin to give thanks, begin to believe what he said, begin to count him faithful. Begin, he's done so many things for you. He's done so many things for us. He continually loads us with his benefits. But oh, if you could just get to understand, oh, I feel good. I mean, there's a lot of stuff and all these other issues. Just forget about all those other issues. I feel good just to know I've been redeemed. Makes me feel good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But with prayer and supplication, don't be anxious about it. Don't be worried about anything. Don't have anxiety. Don't have stress. Don't be in a turmoil. That's disobedience. That's going to get you into a prison. That's going to keep you from the supply that God has for you. But with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, because you just received it, make your request known unto the Lord. And guess what Father's going to do for you? Guess what he's going to do for you? You're going to find yourself coming into a whole new realm of living. Now, dear people, here's what you're going to do. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen tonight. You're going to receive the peace that I have. So that you can live in peace. It will rule your heart and it will rule your mind. And then you're going to be able to give it away. And that is going to be one great transition. Every bit of hurt in your life. If anybody's got hurt in their life and there's people in here tonight, I can see there's hurt in your life. You're, and, and most of the hurt that's in your life is because you're not getting what you want. Should I say that again or should I keep quiet about that? <laughs> It's like Tim says, nobody's got to wonder why they're going to die when Spitzer talks. <laughs> and this is the way the Lord made me. <laughs> Dear people, tonight we want these hurts to go. We want this stuff to go. We want you to find everything that you want in Christ Jesus. Because Every real thing is in Him. Every good thing is in Him. And certainly you don't want terrible stuff for your life. You don't want to be beat up and destroyed and killed and robbed from. Every good thing's in Him. And He's not going to disappoint you. Annika is not going to be disappointed. Francesca is not going to be disappointed. Father, thank you for the anointing. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Hallelujah. You know, it's it just, it, it's beautiful because, you know, you, when you're just so ready to receive, you know, you're just so ready. Just lay it on me, God. I'm, I'm ready. That's a confident expectation. See, faith is the reality of a confident expectation. It's a reality. It's all the reality I need, faith. I'm ready. Bring it, Father. I know it's now. Feel me. There's no, there's nothing hindering. There's nothing holding back. You're wide open. The doors of your heart, the gates of your heart, wide open. Just, just like, come feel me, oh God. Mouth's wide open. Ah, ah, ah. Huh? Like the little bird. He's not concerned about, what are you going to put in my mouth right now? What is that? How oh, mom's got something to stick in a birdie's mouth. And what is that? I don't know if I want that. It's like, ah. huh? That trusting hunger. Come on, man. Feel me now, oh Lord. Feel me with every good thing, oh God. 
fill me with all the good things. I don't want no more depression. I don't want no more sorrow. I don't want no more sadness. I don't want torment, no more anxiety. You listen to me. If you have anxiety and stress, it's one for one reason, one reason alone. Because you did not with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving make your request known to the Lord. And maybe if you did, somehow you forsook that. Tonight I want to give you firm ground to stand on. So that when these things come at you, you're able to throw them off. You're able to cast it off. You're able to cast anxiety off of you. It makes it a little bit of a difference. It makes it sound a little bit different than just casting all your cares upon him, doesn't it? Huh? It's throwing off anxiety. It's throwing off that which would afflict and torment you. See, the Lord said he gave us the garment of praise. For what? For what? Spirit of heaviness. Yeah. Understand, there's no other way for you to get out of the spirit of heaviness rather than to put on this mantle of praise. Yeah. You're, you're going to have to just rise up from where you're at. And it might just be this little week. Yeah. He's like... Thank you, Jesus. He doesn't have any more strength than to go... Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So much I didn't feel like it. <laughs> you ain't gonna feel any different till you start doing it. Right. You're not gonna feel nothing's gonna change until you start participating with this miracle of change. There has to be a participation. There has to be a willingness to cooperate. There has to be a willingness to activate the anointing, activate faith, activate that, that which good thing which God has given because you're going to be willing to do that which that simple, almost seemingly foolish and meaningless activity of just sitting there and going, thank you Father for your goodness. Thank you Father for your word. Thank you Father for divine provision. Thank you for the miracle in my life. Thank you Father that you did these things. When these di different torments, these anxieties, these issues come upon you, these things that would cause uh, hurt to rise up in you and afflict you and hold on to you, you're going to have to learn how to begin to talk to the Father. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand the cure, for the, the cure for it is easy, praying in the Holy Ghost. The cure for it is easy, giving thanks. Mm -hmm. A garment... The praise causes the spirit of heaviness to go away. <laughs> the oil of joy causes all sorrow. That's called depression. Huh? One of the things I mean, the Lord gave me a lot of teachers in my life, a lot of mentors in my life. And, and watching Carlos Santa Condi and being able to travel with him, being able to be inside as the Lord helped me understand a bit how a particular gifting worked to deal with demon spirits that actually impacted whole regions, cities, individuals. It was a wonderful thing. But I experienced a whole new thing when I got to be with Rodney and live with Rodney and go, travel around with Rodney for a number of years. And watch as demon spirits went out of people as the joy came into them. A whole nother way of deliverance. And you know, the Lord does it with all that diversity. Carlos is going, Escucha me, Satanás! You know, Satan, I destroy you right now. And the, man, the power of God that was released in those meetings. And still are. And, and, and Rodney, Phil! <laughs> Phil! <laughs> Phil! <laughs> Phil, receive. <laughs> you know, 
Watch people get overwhelmed with the joy of the Lord and the, and the oppression and sorrow and demon spirits that have occupied their life and held them back from being able to receive the good things of God's presence broken instantaneously. My, it's wonderful. I love the diversity of ministry. I love the way God does things through His people and God wants to do some unique things through you. Can you believe it? Can you believe it that He's raised you up for such a time as this? Can you believe it that God has purposed to do great signs and wonders and miracles through your life? Hey, and, and and, and, and it's not about going around getting qualified with people. No, it's the people who are most willing, who most want it. Just like you, brother, because you so desire it, because you're so willing for it, because you so want it. That's just how easy it is. Just because you're willing, you want it. I mean, I, you know, Reinhardt was asking, Lord, Lord, why'd you use me to shake Africa and do through me what you never did through any other men? And God said, well, you weren't my first choice. <laughs> Actually, we're number six on the list. The others wouldn't go. <laughs> All you got to do is just be passionate about this. People are stuck in their mind. They don't think they can do it. I've seen the greatest miracles and signs and wonders take, through pe take place through people who are the least qualified. They were the least qualified, but they believed it with absolute abandonment while everybody else was sitting around reading the Word trying to figure something out. <laughs> are you listening to me? Trying to get more educated. Somebody, all they could say is the tutter and another, and they went and did it all. They didn't have enough education to be able to put it on paper, but they went and did it because they counted all that God had said a reality for their own life, and they weren't intimidated by nothing. Somebody said, You're intimidating. No, it, it, you, something got hold of you that you want to get rid of. Because <laughs> when you stood before the presence of the Lord, nothing intimidates you. Hallelujah. Come on, Shakara de Halapahaya. Nothing. Huh? We're confident, but we don't walk around arrogant about it. We confident. And we bold and we're sure, but we just wait our turn. We wait till we called on. Hallelujah. Just knowing you carry something. It doesn't matter. Listen, God will use you in such amazing ways. It doesn't matter how you feel. I was with Rodney one time and we were in a, a meeting. There must have been somewhere between eight, twelve thousand people. I was fried. I was so worn out, I was tired, I was starting to feel like him. You know, screensavers on. <laughs> you know, just like you can talk to me about out here nothing. It's like sleeping with my eyes open. And he's standing up there and his screensaver was doubly on. He was really very tired. He was more tired than anybody in the, on the planet at the time. And he says, Mark, come up here. And I'm, I'm looking behind me, hoping somebody else named Mark is <laughs> behind me. But I carry something. I might have been so exhausted, I had no thought in my head. I had just, I, 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 as far as I could predict, if I said something, it sounds something like this. <laughs> it would be just meaningless, mumbling. But no, no, no. I carry something. I get up because I'm confident I carry something. It doesn't matter what I feel. I was tired, burnt out, didn't have a thought in my head. I carry something. So I, I, I walk up on the platform, had no preparation, tired, worn out, power, stand there. It comes out, just the word, of the, the word of the Lord, the word of life just flows out. I just want you to understand, people, this is easy stuff. I'm trying to use every possible thing tonight I can grab, for example, and show you how easy this is, how all you've got to be is just totally dependent upon God. Now, if I was all self-confident in myself and, oh, yeah, it's my turn. Oh, it's my turn. Oh, mm, mm, I've got to get a scripture quickly. Oh, I remember one. And then I went out and did something. Forget about it. Dud. Dud. Dong. What is it? What is it? What is it? Gong. <laughs> gong, sit, gong, sit down. Let's have the tired guy talk again. <laughs> this is the challenge, people. I'm helping you. I'm helping you. This is the challenge. Self-confidence is a flop. It's a flop. It's a grand flop. Huh? Human ability is a grand flop. Uh, th those of us who know we can't do anything, we get it. Those of us who went before, we, we, you know, huh, come on, man. Listen to me. Huh? It's like, I'm telling you, start bragging on Jesus and watch what happens. I don't know how else to explain this to you. I just want you to just, I want you to get rid of 
all your own self interest and all your own confidence and all the things you think you're skilled at doing all the things you believe about yourself you know those things that keep you from having good relationships with people around you to keep you isolated cause you to live in intimidation and cause you to live in fear to cause you to live in anxiety cause you to live in a prison of introvertedness oh but it's such liberty when you're not ruled by what everybody else thinks of you anymore what liberty, man. What liberty, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, they just like that. My God. I tell you. I mean, I wouldn't do this, but you'd be so, just so free, so liberated. You walk up to another guy, look at him in his eyes, and give him a kiss on the lips, tell him that you love him. <laughs> no, true. It's true. And then most people say, oh, my goodness, what did he say now? But it's just, there's this realm of just, just this love of God. And it's just absolutely pure and everything is good and wonderful. And there's no self-consciousness. Are you, are you hear me? Can you hear what I'm saying? I watch people interact with each other and they're just so awkward. <laughs> huh? You know why? It's like they got a third eye, you know, they're trying to hide it. <laughs> oh man, get liberated, Eva. Get liberated. Just get liberated. Quit being so awkward. Come on, just come over here in this place and be just so accepted, so loved, so so at so at rest. Just so I'm looking around, making sure everybody's liberated. And I see a couple of people still got deep hurts in your life. I don't see many. I see most people just letting God just do this thing in them. Yeah. I, see, I see very few hurts. Just a couple of people resisting. A couple of people not willing to receive. A couple of people still holding on to things. Huh? They want to talk to somebody about it. I tell you right now, the most important person for you to talk to about what's going on in your life is Jesus Christ, not anyone else. The most important person is the Holy Spirit. He's going to take care of you. you know? Somebody said, Pastor Mark, I need you to help me. The first thing I let them know is I cannot help you at all. God has given me the spirit of counsel and he's given me a spirit of understanding and he'll speak through me but I want you to know I can't help you. No human being. If a human being believes they can help you run for your life <laughs> they're going to mess you up. If you believe that you can help somebody I'm telling you you're going to do some terrible damage and you'll never have the liberty To receive all that he has and just operate in it. Freely I received. And so therefore I can give. Because I carry something. I don't have to convince myself of it. I don't have to talk myself into it. I don't have to quote scriptures to, to, to be able to move in it. I receive something. And in this place of receiving, God will allow us to be strengthened in it to where that there is a revelation of the supply that has been given to us so that greater works can be done. Thank you, Jesus. I don't, you know, I'm the kind of person I want I want 100% of the people healed. I want I want 100% of I'm on deburdened. So I went to a deburdening deburdening meeting tonight. All my burdens rolled away. Huh? Huh? It's okay, we sing it. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. But how about really having it? I want, we want All the burdens, which creates the depression, which creates the sorrow, which creates the sadness. I want you to stand with me. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Isn't that a great song? I was a great. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith 
I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. One more time. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Go ahead, Emily. Gently. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna begin to, you're gonna begin to flow in another realm of the of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> you're going to be occupied with the thoughts of God rather than the thoughts of men. You're going to be occupied, go ahead and play. You're going to be occupied with the report of the Lord rather than the reports of men. I could say rather the rumor mill of men. Go ahead and play. Father's going to give you a new sound. He's going to give you a new song. Father's going to give you a play. Listen. Father's going to give you a place to stand this solid footing. Amen. Listen. God has given you weaponry. The weapon of our warfare, not carnal, but mighty through God. He's given you divine power and ability to stand strong, the strength of the Lord, the power of His might, to be able to put on Father's whole armor. Amen. Now, here's what I'm going to do. And you're going to stand. You're going to quit. You're going to quit getting taken out. It is nothing to do. It has nothing to do with some physical malfunction of your body. <laughs> Pain is a spirit. Depression, anxiety is a spirit. As some endocrinologists tell you this thing and that. Nonsense. Nonsense. Science does not understand the framework of reality. They do not understand what's really going on. We're here to tell you tonight that everything about your life, spiritually, physically, materially, financially, is dealt with in the realms of the Spirit. Every bit of it is dealt with, and all of those things that you have need of are provided by Christ Jesus according to His riches and glory. Tonight, I'm going to deal with Depression. It is a spiritual and mental affliction. Condemnation. I'm met you. And then I'm believing God in Jesus' name that you will take a hold of a faith realm and relationship with God to stand in it because when that thing comes back and put tries to put itself upon you, tries to force itself upon you, tries to impose itself upon you. You can rise up and you can begin to send Judah first. Huh? In other words, you can begin to send praise first. God said to the God said to Israel, God said to God said to the people of Israel, you won't fight your own battle today. But you'll see the Lord fight among you today. Because what you're going to do is you're going to lift up your voice and you're going to praise. You're not going to go with sword and shield. You're going to understand that, there, that every one of your enemies will be defeated by the power of the living God as you stand there and worship Him. You stand there and praise Him with your heart. And it is. It isn't even the loudness of your voice. It's, this, it's the truth of your heart. It's here, it's here. And Father, I'll give that to you. You don't have to try to make it happen. Just stand, just stand still and watch God fill you up with praise. Watch Him fill you up with these things. I'm going to break off anxiety, depression, condemnation, sorrow, people walking around. Listen, if you walk around mentally and you feel like a failure and you feel like 
people don't like you and you feel like a disappointment, that's what you give to others. What you have is what you give. What a terrible thing to be given. It's time you get delivered tonight. It's time you get delivered of that oppressing power of darkness. Now I know that some of you may actually have to humble yourself a bit tonight. Because you feel like, my goodness, you know what? Everybody going to know I've been living under this cloud of doubt. Tonight, I have the cure. God, the Holy Spirit, has given me the cure. I carry the cure for this thing. And I break it off of you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I destroy the stronghold of it. But i got to help you understand something. With that, you have to be able to receive the empowerment of praise and thanksgiving. The garment of praise. Let me explain something to you that the Lord showed me. There was a time in my life that I gave myself to passionate prayer. And I'd be down praying for hours upon hours upon hours. In a position where it actually caused my nose to bleed. Because I was down on, on my knees, down on my face. And all that pressure under my head. The Lord spoke to me and said, it really isn't that hard. He said, I want to, he said, that's your human effort. It was good. He honored it. He said, that's your human effort. He said, I want to show you how to do this in flow. I want to show you how to flow. In the anointing, you can't force anything. You just got to flow. I, I'm gonna t can I tell you something else? Can I take it to another step? You really got to relax. You got to stop trying so hard. One day I was saying to the Lord a number of years ago, I said, Lord, I want, oh God, what does it take for you to use me in a greater way? And the Lord says, telling me, get out of the way. And I kept thinking, well, that don't make any sense. How can I get out of the way? And the Lord helped me to see that I was making it all too much about me. And he wanted me to just to make it about him. He didn't want me to stand up in front of the masses of people with me. He wanted me to stand up there in the midst of the God factor. In the midst of that I was in the way and that Papa empowered me to do all this stuff. Now I can release something. Because it wasn't about me. I'm just over here in this realm relaxing in the presence of the Lord. And we watch great signs and wonders and miracles take place on the foreign field. We're going to watch great signs, wonders, and miracles take place here in the United States of America. In the name of Jesus. The Lord said, you just, the Lord said, you just keep, the, you start doing what God told you to do. And you start keeping the things of the kingdom first. You start making the kingdom things in your place and your position and what you're supposed to be doing in the kingdom, your priority, and I guarantee you these things that are being able to try to be run over top of you won't be able to run over top of you anymore. You know what I'm so excited about? Reinhardt Bunke, the Lord told him just recently to start running with, a, with, the, with meetings in America like he did it when he first started in Africa. And he started, and he just recently started on the East Coast. Something's happening. Something's happening. Rodney told me that when he's done with when he's done with Washington, he, he's going to start doing revival meetings in churches again, like he did in the nineties. Tim said, "Tim said I have I've been stirred with a special interest for the United States of America. God's about ready to do something in America. God's about ready to do something in America."
I feel, the, I feel such an urgency about it. I said, Lord, you want me to start going to different places in America, renting uh, uh, halls and, 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 and going after the lost? And the Spirit of the Lord just made it very clear to me. Just stay very, very focused. Get people, now get people to transition over out of their problems into my supply. Get people out and get people to transition. Just stop, just stop having it. Just stop allowing it. Just start proclaiming it. Start teaching it in a way where there nobody has any excuse but then to go everywhere and do miracles. And signs and wonders. And believe God for great things. That doesn't mean to say we're not going to be helpers of your faith. When you don't know how to work through a situation, when you don't know how to overcome a harassing, tormenting thing, we're going to help you. We're going to stand alongside of you. Listen, if Jesus should put prayer and intercession as the most important thing to him, then it should be the most important thing to us too. So if it should be most important that he would pray and intercede for me, then it should be most important that I pray and intercede for you. And, and likewise, you also do the same for others beginning with your family. I've rarely asked prayer for my family even though we've been under sore attack by the enemy. I rarely do. You know why? Because I got this thing. I really feel I got it. I got this thing. But I know that the Lord still would stir some people up without me even having to ask. To begin to pray for those who watch after yourself. Because I'm telling you, we get in the heat of the battle. The enemy says, listen, you know, I'll take him, I'll take out the thing. I'll stop the thing. I see it gaining too much momentum. That I'm not going to let it happen here in the United States of America. Listen, be careful that you don't join in with the intercession of hell. All right, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Against God's ministers. I'm not really, I'm not saying that in a self-serving way. I'm just telling you, Satan hates God's ministers. And they're going people are going to find every kind of problem, every kind of accusation. Come on now, look. Pray for the people that are standing up here. Pray for them because they actually, they're actually like, they're actually like a, a storm break for you. You know what I'm saying? They're actually a storm break for you. They're a storm break for you. Are you with me? And then as you pray, you, you'll become a storm break too. You'll be able to have that same anointing too. Hallelujah. 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 A new song's coming on. A new realm. A new realm of faith. I'm going to pray tonight for those who are harassed by depression. There are people here tonight, you actually have to take medication for depression. You have to take medication for stress and anxiety. There are others here tonight that it's hard for you to have a good day. You usual, your normal way of living is a bit gloomy. And there are certain expressions that come out of that. You always have, you're pretty negative. It's kind of negative. You got a you got a pessimistic spin on everything. God wants to break that thing off of you tonight. Listen, listen. Father will do it, but you can't be hiding from God. You got to desperately want this. You can't be saying. You you can't be holding something back. You got to want. You got to need these things from heaven. You've got to want need change because if you don't want need change. I'm a, I'm, tonight, that, tonight that addiction is going to be broken. It's addiction to sorrow. What happens is you just got to hurt. And what, was, what, what happened was hurt will turn into to a sorrow. And sorrow will turn into a depression. And depression will turn into an anxiety. And that's more than any man or woman can bear. Tonight, the Spirit of the Lord is going to fill you up. wants to fill you up. 
Maybe it's too embarrassing for you to come up here. I'm willing to hook up with you where you stand and see the oil of joy come upon you. To see the garment of praise. It's all fixed. Everything's fixed when you touch heaven and you begin to worship and praise him. It's all fixed. It's all fixed. Let me, let me pray with you if you carry a, a, a heaviness in your heart. I want you to come on. You let me pray with you. If you carry a heaviness in your heart, there's going to be a there's going to be a sorrow in your eyes. If you carry a sorrow in your heart, there's going to be a sorrow in your eyes. If you carry a hurt in your heart, there's going to be a hurt in your eyes. Did you want to come and bring the love of Jesus to people? And they're looking in your eyes and they're going, "You're hurting." Because it doesn't take a genius to tell when someone, it doesn't take a person with a discerning of spirit to tell when somebody's hurting. There's hurt in the eyes, you can see it. Husbands, you need to look into the eyes of your wife and if they're hurting, you need to be the solution for the hurt. You don't need to point out and say, you know, you, you look pretty bad. <laughs> that ain't going to help anybody. You're going to have to begin to lay hands on them and love on them. You're going to have to begin to pray and intercede. You're going to have to be a carrier of anointing so you can lay hands on them and they get healed. And that joy, and that's joy of the Lord fills them. Surabababa. 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 I believe that Satan has held some of the mightiest candidates for the kingdom of God back simply through sorrow, hurt, and depression. It opens up a big gigantic door and window for condemnation, intimidation, fear. What's that, Geneva? Come. S continual sickness, a spirit, a spirit of infirmity is hooked right in the realms of depression. Those, thi those things all work together. Unforgiveness, hatred. Hatred is the opposite of loving like Jesus loved. He commanded, he didn't request, he commanded us to love one another as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. If you can't serve people like that, if you don't love like that, you can come under a spirit of depression because there's a spirit of hate. Of That's a spirit of hate that takes a hold of you. And so then it, it, it messes with your moods. It controls you. And then you come under a spirit of depression. A spirit of depression works in so many different realms. If you don't think that you're obtaining and, and doing well enough at work and Things don't go right at work, and then you get all upset about it. Then Jesus isn't being your answer. You're coming under a spirit of depression because Jesus isn't your answer. If your husband isn't doing exactly what you need, you think you need him to do, and you're getting upset about that, it's a friend, a loved one, whatever. You're getting upset about that, and you carry that in your spirit, then Jesus isn't your answer. You're trying to look to your husband to be your answer. A man or a woman or a friend can never fulfill that in, in your life. Only Jesus can make you happy and fulfill your life. And then you're so happy that your, your husband's happy and he makes you happy and you make him happy because Jesus is the most important person to you. He is your all in all. He is all you need. And then you won't come under that spirit of depression. You won't care what other people do, friends do. That, that won't affect you. You will affect them by just being so satisfied with Jesus that Jesus is your all in all. When he's, when he's your first love then you fulfill other people's lives. You don't look for them to fulfill you. Otherwise, you come under a spirit of depression at times in your life. So almost every person is vulnerable 
to that when Jesus is not everything when you look to man in any way in your job your husband your wife your friends in any relationship when you look to them to fulfill you Jesus isn't your all in all and you can come under that demonic spirit of depression and you need to get a hold of this right now because it will destroy your life it will keep you bound and held back from what God has called you to do He's called you to rise and shine and let the glory of His light shine through you. <laughs> Father wants to break that off of you tonight. And I'm telling you what, why not trade in the rags that the enemies held you in bondage with for the riches of heaven and glory? I wouldn't let pride keep me in my seat. I wouldn't let pride hold me back from trading it in for the glorious garments of the Almighty. One more thing. Look at the humility of Jesus. Look at Jesus, how he taught his disciples. Look at what Jesus did. He took the towel and the basin and he says, you call me Lord and Master and so you're right. I am your Lord and Master. Now you watch what I do and this is what you do. You serve other people. You love them. You wash their feet. You care for the saints. You pour out that love that the Holy Ghost has poured in you. You don't have an expectation for somebody to give it to you. You pour it out because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He lives on the inside of you, the greater one. The Holy Ghost fills you with the love of heaven, the love of the Almighty. It's not your ability for you to love, but you lift your hands in, in surrender and you let that love pour through you. And you're a conqueror of every situation. Why do you want to be the tail when you can be the head? Christ church is the head. All we need to do is be like Jesus. Pull out that talon basin. Walk in that humility. The humility that Jesus walked in and serve and love. And the humility that needs to get you down here right now out of your mess. And over into the realms of glory. Hallelujah. Let it happen tonight. I believe that some of the most mighty people, some of the people that would have some of those mighty and profound effect in the kingdom of God, have been healed by sorrow and depression, accusation, intimidation, fear. See, faith works by love. Perfect love casts out all fear. Fear has torment. There's too many people that have torment. Tonight we're going, to, we're going to believe God for a special work of grace that you can just, just take a hold of His love for you. And you can just begin to sing and walk around throughout the day saying, I'm the apple of His eye. I'm the center of His life. Oh, God loves me so. Oh, He loves me so. Oh, you begin to enjoy His affection even when, you're, even when you fail. Even when you don't me measure up. I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't feel like you measure up, you say you're going to make sure that you never feel like you measure up either. You might as well just go ahead and receive the abundance of grace. You might as well just go ahead and receive an abundance of grace here tonight and be accepted in the Beloved. Well, Crystal, you come stand up here. I figure you're about 90% done. <laughs> You want to get in closer quickly. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the joy of your salvation. I thank you for the garment of praise. <laughs> no, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, for this anointing right now. 
Next take block ta, in stock ta. X take ta, make ta. Make ta, stick here, take a ta. X take ta, take a ta. S tia, take a ta, take a Body on Jesus' name, I give him a peace. Body on Jesus' name, give him a comfort. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Abiding in the glory, girl. You broke the other. Living and abiding in all that Christ Jesus has given. See at the Cadicia, the Gia, the Isicari and the Nama. Ningandani and Dani and Daranias. Firm footing. A firm footing on a solid foundation. Firm footing on a solid foundation now. Firm footing on the solid foundation. No more will harassing, tormenting thoughts be able to plague your mind. In Jesus' name, they'll go away. They'll, they'll have to leave as you rise up in your passion with respect to the offering of your life to the Father. You'll beat them off with a stick, so to speak. Like Abraham did when he was waiting for the pop Father's glory to show up, pass between the pieces. It's true. It's true. It's true. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I commission you to be a Holy Ghost woman from this day forward. To go everywhere preaching the gospel when the time should be right. Remember right now, just stay around, get filled up, and be happy. Thank you, Jesus, for the love. Thank you, Jesus, for the goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the past is gone forever. It's broken from off your life. Now in Jesus' name. Sorrow? Oh! Sorrow goes. Goes from off you. Sorrow goes from off you. Hallelujah. The joy of his salvation fills and overflows your life. Every good thing in Jesus' name. Every good thing begins to occupy your heart and mind. No more grieving. No more grieving. No more. Just just, just lift your hands. From this day forward, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Happy all the day. Happy all the day. Kikarananda sikiri kalana musardai. Menaim la sikai yeshu. I threw you right now. I threw you right now. I threw you right now. Thank 
you, God. Father, I thank you that you give every good thing. Father, I thank you right now for your provision here in this life. This night, everything for Jonathan changes. Thank you, Lord. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive. Receive right now. Receive right now. Ha ha ha. Lead up The dad of my Let his joy fill you. Stay with you. And from this day forward, in Jesus' name. Every hurt of the heart, every pain of the soul, go on Jesus. Sweet it is, just lift your hands towards heaven. Be healed right now. Be healed. Ha! 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 Mulana de Baya, Utoki is a Hara Mokatai, Ikatoki Lakatai, Ixtu, Nanante is she, Ist. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command Terry, rise up and walk. Now today, in Jesus' name, the hurt and the sorrow goes away. The affliction and the torment comes to an end. Now this day, this day in Jesus' name, I reach and I take the thing out. In Jesus' name, everything begins anew. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now is that what you guys stand up here for? Is that it? Yeah. Oh, and then your hand. <laughs> <laughs> So then God's going to do it, right? Yep, yep. Mm. So if he told me so I can agree with you, <laughs> then it's on his mind. Then it's on his yeah. mind, ain't it? Yeah. Mm. Then I say it's done! Jesus. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> done! In Jesus' name. Done! <laughs> Mangato. Now in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. And every sorrow and every heartache flees away right now. There you go, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Ha 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who regards the die line? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Today is a new day, a beginning of days for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Lord has put a song in your mouth. He's put praises in your heart. Because of His great love and goodness towards you. All day you're going to sing this song. You're going to pray this prayer. Praise this praise. Amen. Not going to be a doubt anymore. You're going to call it done. You're going to call it done. God is told you. You're not going to be healed no man. You're not going to be healed back no more from the greatness that God has called you into. Hey. You don't want to be held back anymore from the greatness God just called you into.
It goes for both of you. <laughs> Hey, I got a word from heaven for you. It's the knowledge of the Lord. You're not going to be held back from the greatness which God has called you into. So therefore, the Lord spoke it. He'll also do it. Watch what happens. Here, guys, huddle up. You figure you need to be huddled up a bit. Jesus. 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 You can walk around all day singing, God is so good. Yeah. And really mean it. And really know it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> <laughs> Judah he's praising the Lord sends Judah first it's called praise did you know that was your name praise yeah you knew that so the Lord going to touch you tonight Judah in a special way and the Lord's going to touch Mama tonight in a special way. Because life equals fun. <laughs> faith, how are you doing? Are you strong in faith? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, woman of God. Just believe all the good things that the Lord has said about you. They're yours. Not later, it's now. That's the fire and presence of the Lord is fixing everything for you. He's <laughs> fixing it. He's <laughs> fixing it right there. name, daughter of the Lord, servant of the Most High God, be made perfectly whole. Be made perfectly whole. So that your faith will now be a shield. Hallelujah. And with this helmet of salvation upon your head, you can't hear nothing. You have to take the helmet off to hear what everybody's saying. <laughs> All you can hear is the word of the Lord and the report of the living God. In Jesus' name. Put your hands towards heaven. In Jesus' name. He's on. Mongay, Monga Daya, Monga Deka Day, Monga Sadaka Day, Monga Lang, no more, no more harassing, tormenting thoughts upon you. It has to o obey. And it has obeyed. Now you're going to obey and praise your way right through into glory. You're going to obey and praise your way right into glory. Monga Sakaya, Monga Day, Monga Jest, Masse, Masse, Masse. Masayate. Masayate. Judah, just lay your hands right there on Mama's belly. Right there. Faith, come just lay your hands on Mama's belly. <laughs> now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. The strength of the Lord and the power of His might is yours. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
This joy and peace in the Holy Ghost is yours. It's yours. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This joy and peace in the Holy Ghost is yours. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, living God. That's electrifying fire of the Holy Ghost right there. <laughs> That's electrifying fire of the Holy Ghost right there. Out of your belly flows a river. Spring. Go ahead and have Heaven's Wellspring right there where you at. <laughs> That's a contagious glory right there I see on that face. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. every day. amazing reality that God would raise up a mighty army from off this floor right here.
received right now. <laughs> Just received right now. Amen. Receive right now. Thank you, Jesus. Receive right now. Receive right now. I said receive right now. Monks to Kai and I hit it. Yes, to Kai and Lamanda better tea. Let me just tell you this. Let me tell you this. When the Lord puts a burden upon you, you're not burdened with doubt. You're not down in the mouth when you talk about it. Oh, it ain't working out. No, I feel that we failed. And uh, That's lies from hell. That has nothing to do with God. Are you listening to me? When God gives you a burden, He gives you a confidence of faith that you're going to change it now. Do you hear me? Yeah. And then, then your words are bold words of great authority. This is the way it's going to come down. This is the way it's going to be. Now the Lord would teach you how to discern these things. He'd teach you how to understand how the Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit always speaks with courageous, courageous words. Words of divine ability and certainty and confidence and authority. That's what the Holy Ghost ministers. Any other kind of counsel, you just want to have rejected. Now, Amy of the Spirit. <laughs> Amy, not unlike simple McPherson, but with greater anointing. I commend your arms to be strengthened spiritually. I commend you to be strengthened right now in Jesus' name. And Brad, I command you to be strengthened right now in Jesus' name. And I, man, I demand that you obey me. <laughs> <laughs> that you receive every good thing from heaven. <laughs> and that you begin, to in, you begin to enjoy being blessed with all spiritual blessings. <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> My dear brothers, good to see you here tonight. Father, I thank you for the anointing upon every single person is willing to go for you. And every form of discouragement <laughs> that would come from looking at results and looking at the outcomes of things will have no effect on you in Jesus' name, but a great boldness and certainty that Papa God shapes you for a divine purpose that He's willed. Now, overwhelms your heart and mind, rules you, and controls and commands you from this day forward. Mm. Hallelujah. Jesus. So, we would be being very courageous. Mm -hmm. Being courageous. Being, being courageous. Hallelujah. Ha. Huh. Being courageous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha. Standing in the faith, being courageous like a man. Hallelujah. A and strong. Hallelujah. Like a man of God. Like a mighty man of God. Like one who has received the capacity to fully represent the kingdom of God. To walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. And minister to things of the Spirit. Mm. Thank you, Lord. The old discouragement, you leave the men of God alone. You leave the man of God alone in Jesus' name. Mm. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now let praise rise up. Mm. Let praise rise up. Let praise rise Love mm. Let a mighty shout come forth from your heart and your life. Let the praise and thanksgiving rise up. Knowing who you are in God. Yes. And knowing what you carry. Mm. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mm. name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, failure, mm -hmm. sorrow, hurts, and disappointments have no more hold upon you. you I'll break it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. I smash it right now. Mm -hmm. Destroy it out of your life. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank Hallelujah. You, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ikara Shambrukaya.
Hallelujah. Mana nana. Manda kara bok shakara tepe. Malana ndo yevrataya. Malade iku na shahata. Malada ati ike inangana nong jasenga. Singing his praises all day long. Singing his praises all the day long. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this anointing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It flows Jesus. right into you right now. Thank you, Jesus. It flows into you right now. Thank you, Jesus. As it flows into you right now. Oh, I receive. It flows into you right now. Thank the strength Jesus. of the Spirit of the Lord. There's a place Jesus. Huh, of receiving flows receive. into you right thank now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank so wonderful how the Lord Jesus. takes all the sorrow and the sadness away. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> how he takes all the doubt and burden away. Yes, Jesus. So wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's so many hurting people. There's so many people that, that, that have called upon the name of the Lord. They love the Lord as much as they know Him. That they've never experienced his healing power. And they're sick and they're hurting. And they're needy and they're all over the place. Daily you brush up against many of them. And you're undiscerning of it. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that from this day forward you will have a heavenly vision and an ability to see. That you will know first and foremost that you carry something because you can see all that is going on but if you're not carrying something that would meet and change the need it's meaningless you see but when you carry the anointing and you know you carry it you know you carry something from heaven ha huh. then when you see the need praise God you just are able to allow that which Father has given you to freely flow. How are you guys doing? What's up? Fine. His ears are good. His ears are good. How are you doing, buddy? How are your ears? Fine. Well, you feel you're hearing good now? to being like 11. Okay? No more torment, men. No more fear. I'll break this thing off of you. Your life's defined in Jesus, not in anything else. That's it. That's the fire of God. That's the glory of heaven. That's the yoke-breaking anointing that destroys everything that calls itself anxiety and worry and care and fear and depression and sorrow. Tonight, Father's done great things for you. Great things. Great thing. Great things. Great things. Great things. Great things. Great things. Great, great things. Ah, hallelujah. 
Joe and Jake, come here. See as you've been being picked on all week, come up here. Come here. I just want I just want if you're still standing in line, I'm gonna get back to you. I just want to, I just want to show off for just a minute. Joe and Jake, come here. Where's where's Jude? Okay, come stand up here. I just want to tell you about men of prayer and faith. The other day Jude ran a high fever in his and he passed out. His eyes rolled back up in her head. His their, his head. These boys went to screaming and hollering and praying so loud they could hear him down the street. Mama trying. Mama couldn't even talk to anybody on the phone. Hey? Hey? Huh? Men of faith, turn the tide. Hallelujah. It don't matter how old you are. They did not get caught up in the problem of their little brother looking like he's about to die or something. They called out and took authority over the situation and commanded him in Jesus' name how he was going to feel. That's what we do around here, ain't it? Amen. Thanks, thanks, brethren. Great testimony that you let me give on your account. Come here, my dear brother. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus, for great confidence and boldness in the faith. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break every stronghold of depression and sorrow from off of your life. Everything that would cause you worry and concern will no longer rule you in Jesus' name. But you'll take all of that and you'll, you'll cast it upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll throw it off of yourself. You'll take all of your concerns and all those things that are deep issues in your life and you present them to the one who is concerned for you. There are many things that have happened in our life. We can't do anything about them. But we can bring them to the altar and worship the Lord with them and give it over to Him. Just, Lord, I don't know how to do, deal with this. I don't know why these things happen, but I'm going to worship you with them. I give them to you. You are not going to be one of those people who have a destiny of being a mighty man of faith and then allow Satan to work some little trick against you and hold you back by his fear and intimidation. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you receive strength. Now, in Jesus' name, you field. You receive strength. Now, in Jesus' name, goes right into you. Into you right now. In Jesus' name, you rise up from where you fell down. A different kind of man. You rise up where you fell down with a different kind of authority. Father, I thank you that you have shield about your daughter. Thank you, Jesus. the glory and the lifter of her head. And Father, these things that have come out against her will not be able to hold her or afflict or torment her mind or her heart and make her feel broken. Satan, all your harassments and all your lies and all your deceits and all your persecution I turn back against you I turn the tables of it now thank you father <laughs> Isaiah 42 verse 4 says he shall not fail nor be discouraged <laughs> Dear bro, dear brother, 
Dear brother, come here. Just one more time. Here, listen. <laughs> it, listen, the more we touch by the Lord, the greater our capacity becomes to receive, the more we will receive. The more we stand in the prayer line. I used to go to the prayer line if they called for someone who was pregnant. <laughs> I would be in the prayer line. One night, when right after John Arnott had uh, God touched him in a powerful way, I was in one of the first meetings he did after those events happened. And he called for people with migraine headaches, and I went up. <laughs> Not because I had a migraine headache, but I just was going to get right in the big middle of anything. The move of God was going on. There was a move of God in town. Huh? And then they're not going to sit back over and say, Oh, well, if there's a move of God, the Lord will come to me. I'm going to be first one in the crowd, pressing up against the, pressing up against, yeah. sit, sitting at home, well, if he, you know, he can come over. He, he's in, he's in town. He's over in Jerusalem. I'm heading for Jerusalem now. I'm not staying in some other city. No, sir. <laughs> I'm so hungry for the anointing. I don't care where I got to go. Are you listening to me? Huh? I don't care what prayer line I need to stand. It can be a, a five-year-old kid anointed of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to stand in the prayer line, man. I'm standing in the prayer line. I'm standing in the prayer line. I'm standing in the prayer line. Sometimes I see the anointing on my wife. I just grab her hand. I put it on my head. I'm, standing, I'm hungry for the things of the Spirit. I love the anointing. I'm thirsty for the anointing. I'm, th I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty. I'm going to drink all the time. I'm so thirsty. I'm so hungry for the things of God. I'm hungry for the things of God. I'm, I'm not picky. I'm not picky. I'm not picky at all. I'm not picky. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. When you're hungry, you got all the picky goes away. You get hungry. Hallelujah. Ah, God, I saw you today. Hallelujah. Halabokasai. I'm passionate for these things. Mazikaya. Mazikaya told you, Tara. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I I was I had been uh, <laughs> Thank you Jesus. <laughs> Nikki come stand up here now. Put your hands towards heaven. <laughs> now, what is it? What, 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 what were you going to say? Um, I heard the Lord say that there's people here tonight that have had false expectations. And the Lord says, turn your expectation to me. For I will not fail you and I will not forsake you. I will not leave you. Turn your expectation to me. And there's people that still in this place, you've had problems with sorrow, but you've not come forward. And all the Lord wants to do is fill you with his joy and with his love and with his peace. So come now. <laughs> one more time. Put your hands towards heaven. Slip them out just a little bit higher. Like lightning rods. Like you're going to draw in the lightning. There used to be these... I didn't have a, you know... I was too busy having television, so there was one in the lab. 
number of years ago, and then had these um, had these rabbit ears antennas. And I couldn't get a signal, in, so I had to stretch them all the way up. The higher I got them, the better signal it gave in. It just was touch, tough to watch a a five-inch TV screen with your hands extended all the way up. <laughs> Just up, just a little bit higher there. You're getting close. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this realm of glory that you make so real to your servant tonight. Father, we thank you for this realm of your presence that you make so real to your servant tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. There it is. Get your antennas way up. So therefore, whatever you have need of, be healed now in Jesus' name. <laughs> therefore, whatever you have need of, be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> yeah. So call me not to say a tie. Mama Dairy. My mama name. Go ahead, back away, guys. I'm not worried about being sued like Tim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mangalai. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple angels catching for me. You guys do well. You do well. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And you need to have that every meeting. And in between times too. Yeah. Several times a day. God make you twice as mighty steel. God make you twice as mighty steel. I said, God, make it twice as mighty steel. <laughs> God, make it twice as mighty steel. <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Saka dai, shake a ling, shake a baka doka, bow tie. Monday, Mandabola, Imbala, every meeting, every meeting, twice a day in between, every meeting, Takanaki, Sapukan, you see. Dad, Mom, come stand here. Look at this, my goodness gracious. 
Father, we thank you that you brought justice around. We've been needing them. Come stand here, Papa. Jason Justice, Eusebius. Eusebius actually means one who fears God. Yeah, did you know that? You knew that, right? One who fears God. So we've been needing justice, the fear of God. Father, we thank you that you brought this life. See what God did? Look what God did. Look at the beauty of it. This is just the beginning of all that our Father will produce between your marriage. Because Jason, you're a valiant man in God. You're an honorable person in God. You've always played by the rules. you always strong on the rules. You don't need to ever have be cast down. And now the Lord's giving you a tenacious faith woman stand beside you. Yes. And he's giving you he's giving you justice. He saved you. And just as you say this, is consecrated to know the Lord and only His ways all the days of His life, to know no ways that belong to the realms of darkness. And you the keepers. Yes, sir. yes you are. You're the one who's going to train him up in the ways of God so that he will not depart from you, because he will not. Amen. You train up a child the way it should go and should not depart from you when it's old. So I say, well, I took him to church. Well, you didn't know to train him. Train him in the ways of God. We're going to teach you. God's taught you. You've been taught of the Lord, and you're going to teach him. He's lent to you, and you're going to give him back to the Lord. Yes, sir. And so you guys named him and, and, and prophesied his destiny. Sounds like a preacher to me. Mm -hmm. One who stands in the causes of God. So I charge you in Jesus' name. Raise him up in the house of the Lord. Raise him up in the fear of the Lord. Raise him up continually being overwhelmed with the presence of the Lord. As you two interact with each other on holy ground, interacting with each other out of the realms of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Keeping your heart and your mind in the realms of divine peace. So all he can feel is the presence of the Lord. He gets, you know what's going to happen then? You know what's going to happen then? When you keep your children in the presence of the Lord, they get around the world and it's strange to them. They feel the demon spirits that people are occupied with in the world, they run back to the church. They run back to the house. Something strange out there. Hallelujah. Somebody says, the pastor can't force my will and tell me what to do. I'll tell you right now, I'm going to not stand by and watch you swim with the crocodiles. <laughs> if you don't have enough sense to stay out of the water, I'm going to grab a hold of you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let you go over there and pet the tiger or the leper either. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God.